Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with the Design Hackers training team. And in the last video that I shot, we looked at a couple of things on this page here, the Taming the Wild page. And in particular, we looked at how to get this uh, image up here, this logo up here, basically split between these two sections. We also looked at how can we put in this little chevron and make it a hyperlink. And then also we looked at how we can have this header come down. When you scroll down a certain amount on the screen, this, uh, this header at the top here comes uh, flying down. So we looked at all that in the last video. And I also mentioned in there that I liked the fact that they had this little hamburger bun icon here and then it opened up this sidebar that comes sliding in. Now there's a couple things I don't like about the way they did this. Is first off, theirs kind of looks a little bit clunky. But also it goes over the top. What I would prefer is that this uh, mobile, uh, I'm sorry, this hamburger bun were to stay right there the whole time and you just click on it to toggle the sidebar on and off. And I also don't like the fact that it comes in over the top of this, this little header section here as well. So let's take a look at what I have mocked up. And again, just typical site that I would build out and uh, for, for, for a mock-up like this. So we got a top section up here and um, I guess this is, the, this is the live site I was going to try to go into the editor. Um, but uh, just to take a look at what we have. So we have our header up here at the top, and we have a hamburger bun right there. And then I just have a number of sections below it just to take up some room on the page. But then I have a final section down here at the bottom, and I'm calling this my sidebar section. And you're going to see what happens to that, because this is actually what is going to become that sidebar. So as you can see here, it could be anything you want built into that sidebar. You could put images in there, you could put links in there, you could put content, anything, even a, you could put a video, as long as it is a ClickFunnels element, you can put it into the sidebar. So let's take a look at the editor itself. And so all I have here is a three column row, and I put in the code to make this go 100% width. Let me just show you that real quick. So on the CSS, you just come in, and this is the CSS ID selector for this top section. And then you always have to add this class for the next div inside of this section. So the next element inside of this section is called container inner. That is the class. And all you have to do is say with 100%. And you can go all the way out to the edges here. And then all I did here is I put in an icon element. I floated it to the left font size of 40, and then under advanced, all I did is I opened this up, typed in the word R, B-A-R, and picked this icon right there with the three bars on it. So that's how you set up this top section. Uh, otherwise, just a yellow background and no padding on the section itself, that's it. Then I just put in a, a number of sections here again, just to make some space, uh, take up some room on the page. And then down here at the bottom, I put in one more section, and I made it a small width, no stickiness. You can make the background color anything you want. You can, you know, do any padding you want. Uh, under advanced, I didn't really do anything there. But again, you can. You can put borders around here. You can put colors in here. You can do whatever you'd like. And just for my sake, I just named a sidebar. Even at that, I don't call it at all by the title. So you can just leave it called section and that would be just fine. But we do, we will be using the CSS ID selector and that would be right there when we get around to using that. And um, otherwise then, uh, as I said in my last video, what I like to do is whenever possible, use native elements built into ClickFunnels and then just show and hide them. And that's basically what you do. So again, instead of having this text like this, you could put in a headline element, let's say, and we'll just take that headline element, we can float it to the left, we can uh, turn it into a hyperlink, so we can just say, let's go to, let's just go to google.com, we'll change the color on it to um, dark color, yeah, let's just make it a blue color. Uh, and uh, now, now, there you go, you click on that, once it opens up, and you'll go to Google. And so that is all there is to setting up the page itself. Now what we have to do, is come up into our CSS, and the first thing we have to do is tell it where do we want it to be. So we're gonna click on our CSS, and that's this part right here. So let me uncomment this section, and take that out as well. 
And so what we're saying is that section, which we were just looking at, I show you the CSS ID selector down there, that section we want to say position of fixed. So we're saying that where we put this on the screen, we want it there all the time, we don't want it to move. And then we're going to say we want it to be down from the top, though 81 pixels, and to the left, let me see something here, something not looking right on my screen. What it was is because of this additional header up here, I think is what the problem is. So it's 81 pixels from here to up to the top here is probably what it's measuring. So you always want to make sure you come into your site like this. And in order to calculate what this height wants to be, we're going to right click on this and we are going to inspect it. And that entire section is 81 pixels tall. And like I said over here, I didn't like the fact that the way they did this and it went over the top like that. So that's why I'm saying we want to come down 81 pixels, which is the exact height of this section. And then that way we'll have it line up right underneath it. So now let's go back into our code. So everything in here is going to be fine at the 81 pixels. We want to have it to the left of zero. Now if we take out the left, and we put in right instead, it'll go over to the right and be 81 pixels from the top. But I prefer it on the left-hand side myself. So we're going to put it back to the left. And you can see here, actually, the left is the default. In fact, I can take out where it says left, and it'll still default over to the left. And then again, we want the height to be 100% of the viewport height. So 100% of the height of the screen. And in this case here, I set a width of 400 pixels. You could have that be any pixel width that you want. So that's what we have. We have it over here. So again, let's save this and let's open this up uh, in a new page and let's see if it looks right. So there it goes. Now, what we're going to do then is we are going to have it be triggered when we click on this hamburger bun icon. So we're going to have it trigger on and off when we click on it. So let's go back into our code. And instead of the CSS, we already have the CSS set. We're going to look at this a little bit later. We're going to come into our tracking code. And again, for you, uh, you'll be coming in here, settings, tracking code, or custom CSS. I just uh, wrote myself some bookmarklets so I can get in and out a lot faster. And so now here I have some code, and I will take off the comments on it so we can see the code. And again, we have it within our script tags. And what we're saying here is this element icon, the, the icon I should say, the icon element, when somebody clicks on that, when somebody clicks on the hamburger button, we want to do something. So it says, when somebody clicks, we're going to run this function, and its function is just simply one line, and it's going to say we want to toggle this, and we want to toggle it fast. When you, in, in here, you could put in any number you would like, 1,000, would be 1,000 milliseconds, which would be one second. If you put in fast, that is 300 milliseconds. You can put in slow, which is 800 milliseconds, or you can put in any number that you want between zero and infinity, and you can put that in there. But again, 1,000 would be the equivalent of one second. So again, let us save this, and then we're going to preview this page. And this time I'll just open it up in a new preview window. So as you see it right now, it would be live on the page. What you would want to do in real practice here is you want to hide this element. And then when you toggle on it, it will appear. So with this type of toggle, you're going to see here it's going to basically go up into the corner like that. So let's change this and let's make that action slow. And this isn't the best way to do it. It's a little bit clunky but I wanted to show you that it's the simplest way of doing it. So let's save this again. I put in the word slow, so it should now go in about uh, 800 milliseconds. So here it is, going to be a little bit slower. And I mean, it's kind of a neat effect. The, the letters kind of move all around and it just kind of uh, runs into the page. So that's one way of doing it. Now let's go back into our tracking code and let's comment out this line and turn this line on. So this one here now is slide toggle and it's going to be fast. So again, about 300 milliseconds. 
and you'll see the difference here in a moment. So what it's going to do now is slide in from the top. So it's just up and down like that. Again, we can make that go a little bit slower. Uh, again, instead of instead of putting in fast here, or instead of putting in slow, let's just put in 300 without any quotes around it, and we will save this, and we will oops, reload the page, and there it goes, just a little bit slower than it was the first time. So that's kind of kind of a neat effect there, and now I will show you the third way of doing this. And in order to do that, we have to come in and we have to comment this back out again. And we are going to then uncomment this. And let me go into our CSS. And we have to uncomment this as well. And you see when I did that, it actually went sliding off of the page. So let's just uncomment that and it will slide off the page. So what this is in the custom CSS, now this, we're getting a little bit more technical here. So we're saying again here, we can go to the left, which again, I don't really need that in there, so let's take that out. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to transform and translate in the X direction. So in this case here, it's coming in and it's going, okay, we want to go negative 400 pixels, because as you see up here, I set that width to 400 pixels. So down here, in order to get it to slide completely off the side of the screen, we have to go negative 400 pixels. So X is in this direction, Y is in this direction. So we want it to be here on the screen, we want it to go negative 400 pixels, so it goes all the way off the side of the screen. And then we want to do a transition. And again, when we're doing a transform, so this transform matches with this transform. We're saying anytime we do a transform, we want to do it in 0.3 seconds or 300 milliseconds and we want it to be linear. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can do your animations. Uh, linear means constant speed all the way across. You can do an ease in or an ease out or an ease in and out which basically kind of goes in slow then faster and then slow at the end again if you do the ease in and out. So that's what we're going to do here but now the second part of this is we have to set another class because this took it off the screen, this puts it back onto the screen. So we set up another class, and you always put a period in front of a class, and so I called this class so show sidebar, and here instead of translating it x minus 400, it translates it to zero. So just for illustrative sakes, I will put it there. That's what it's gonna look like when you're at zero. So minus 400 pixels, and then we're gonna come up to our tracking code because inside our tracking code again here, we're gonna say exactly the same as up here. When somebody clicks on that icon, we're gonna run this function. And that function, again, this is the section that we have come sliding it off the side. We're saying add the class or toggle the class of show sidebar. So show sidebar says make it zero pixels and then, so we're going to turn that on and off. When we turn it on, it'll come onto the screen. When we turn it off, it'll slide off the screen. So we're going to save this. And then we're going to preview. Okay, so first off, it is set at the minus 400 pixels. Now we're going to turn on the show sidebar class. And there it comes in, comes sliding in. And that, again, that's the linear motion that we have. And it's the 0.3 seconds. So... It just slides in nice and smoothly in 0.3 seconds. So that's basically it. You can slide it in from the side, you can slide it in from the top, or you can kind of have it come down and build out of the corner. And again, one last time on the, the tracking code. As always, very, very simple stuff to put in here. And it is simple because we're using native elements built into click funnels and we're basically just turning them on and off or having them slide in or off the screen and that's pretty much all there is to it. Does this work on mobile? I looked at it a little bit, I tested it a little bit. Um, it will, there might have to be some slight modifications or in future videos I'm going to show how to do this on mobile anyway so maybe you have it 
work like this on desktop and then on mobile we'll just swap out a couple of elements and have those elements appear instead of this one. So as always if you have any questions feel free to reach out. Have a great day.